Good morning, guys. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Good morning. What's up, Drew? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is well this morning. Y'all go ahead and invite your followers as you come in the room. Go ahead and invite your followers. Invite your followers. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> go ahead and invite your followers as you walk on in. Good morning. Don't, don't you walk in and leave somebody else out. Take an opportunity to invite your networks in and people that you're connected to. Good morning. Y'all, it is 5 a.m. here in Chicago. It's 5 a.m. I'm just going to leave it there. We know that we, my goodness, are dedicated to a thing. I'm telling you, it is well. It is well. Yep, Cynthia, you're right with me, so I know you understand. And thank you for your faithfulness to this. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Tanya. <laughs> all right, y'all invited your folks in. Y'all invited your family, your friend, mom and them, and all them folk. All right, so we in those that are on the free conference call line this morning. Thank you for being on. Thank you for being in. Um, yeah, let them fight you. I know. I know. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Guys, I'm going to. I share with you, uh, kind of dealing with, good morning, dealing with, uh, dealing along the same lines of what we dealt with yesterday, dealing with our confessions, and um, God gave me a piece this morning that is still kind of blessing my life, all right, so I'm, I'm praying that it blesses everybody else, it is well, I'm praying that it blesses y'all the way that it's still touching me, all right, so I want to jump into it, uh, you're more than welcome, um, I want to go ahead and jump into it. Uh, let's pray, Father. Thank you for the power of our tongue and the power of our confession. Uh, now this morning, give us the ability to see your perspective on uh, everything that we say and do. And we love you for managing our mouths and teaching us how to manage our mouths with everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. It is a tragedy to understand that you have the ability to create a blessing with your mouth, but to use it to curse what God is doing. It is impossible for you to speak words of faith and then turn around and counsel them by what you see and or the negativity of your current situation. Uh, it is very possible for you to speak and be full of the blessing of the Lord, but then uh, coming out of prayer or coming out of a posture where you've tried to draw close to God, you use that same um, energy or fervor that you had and use it in uh, a very counterproductive way and use it to cancel out the very thing that you've prayed for. Uh, it is impossible to speak a thing in faith and then lose faith before you see the reality of what you said come, come to pass. So your heart has to remain um, consistent and your mouth has to remain consistent. All right. I believe that for many, uh, the issue does not come when it uh, comes to believing God for what he said could happen. That may be part of it, but it's not the big issue. The big issue is we, uh, lose touch with the reality of managing our mouths. We forget that just because we say it in prayer doesn't mean that when we come out of prayer, we can change what we're saying. Uh, there has to be an alignment. Our lives have to be in sync and we have to continue to believe God for what we said becoming a reality in everything that we do. It means that there must be a singularity to who we are. We can't have dual personalities, dual activity, and expect to see the fullness of what God has designed and desires for our lives. We have to be in sync. Our hearts have to be in sync. Our conversation has to be in sync. And we have to learn how to manage our mouths, meaning that just because you don't currently see it, 
the way that you want to see it doesn't mean it gives you permission to say it any other way than what God has said it. You have to have the ability to move beyond the way that you feel in a moment to say, until I see what God has said, I've got to keep doing it God's way. All right, there has to be a place. I'm trying to just go ahead and uh, get into the teaching aspect of this. There has to be a place where you understand that you cannot be frivolous with your mouth, but you have to manage your mouth. You have to learn how to bridle your tongue to not allow a confession to be released that is out of alignment and out of sync with what you've just been praying about and praying for. You cannot be flagrant. And you're going to hear me say this word several times uh, this week or this, yeah, this definitely this week. You can't be flagrant with your mouth. You can't say one thing one moment and then turn around and say another thing. And I'm going to go to a story in it in, in just a moment. Uh, you can't can't allow your mouth to be flagrant. You can't allow your actions to be flagrant. You have to be willing to see the goodness of the Lord in everything that you do and not allow what you feel or what you see in a moment to stop you from becoming what God is creating you to be. Your mouth has to be clear of anything that's not like God so that you can have the right conversations and the right management thereof. Now, I would dare to say, that there are people who miss out on the blessing of the Lord just because they don't know how to manage their mouths. Their mouths are too loose, all right? And so this is why I want to go, go ahead and deal with it. Now, a loose mouth really deals with a hard posture and position, and it also deals with the mind and a mentality. If your mouth is loose and always in a place where you can pray one thing and, uh, and then turn around and confess something else. All right, so you can say, well, God, I'm believing you that you're going to give me stability on my job. Let me just go ahead and I'll, I'll take it from this angle. All right, if you say that, God, I believe you're going to give me stability on the job because it's the job you called me to. But then in the next moment, you're in a corner with friends gossiping about your co-workers and about your uh, employer and about the company as a whole. How can God trust you to be faithful with what you just confessed the first time and saying that this was the job he sent you, but you're always complaining about gossiping with or gossiping about the very people he's called you to serve in that capacity. You have literally cursed your prayer. You have canceled it out because you did not believe God for what you prayed for. So this is what I want you to understand. You, you, you don't have the right and or responsibility to not manage your mouth because it doesn't mean that things are not going to get on your nerves, that things are not going to push you to the edge, that there's not going to be a moment where you want to feel a certain way. I don't want to negate that reality, but what I do want to be sure that you are very cautious of is that you don't counsel what you've been praying for, what you've been praying about, all in a moment of frustration because you don't see God in it or God is not doing the thing quick enough or the way that you want them to do it. Better yet, and this is really what I want to get to this morning, you got to be careful that you don't let other people manage your reality with their mouths. This is, this is good to me. Here it is. <laughs> it is one thing for you to mismanage your own reality, but it's another thing for you to allow other people to mismanage your reality based on their limited insight of what God is doing and how God is doing a thing. The moment you allow somebody else's mouth to create your reality, you have given them control over your destiny, everything you will birth, everything you'll bring to pass. It is a dangerous place to be, to get, give somebody else permission to create a reality for your life that is outside of the will of God. And anytime you feel free to give someone else permission to create for you what God did not design, you are entering a dangerous space because if they have enough authority to begin to help call a thing into existence in your life and you have given them right rule and responsibility to do so, they have the ability to alter the thing that God has already spoken to you and that you have prayed about. All right, so 
uh, another part of mouth management. This is this is going to help you. It's not just managing your mouth, but managing the mouth that you allow to speak into the destiny that God has designed for your life. You cannot allow everybody to speak over you, to speak into you, to tell you what God is saying, and it's outside of what God is trying to do in you. Better yet, you cannot entertain every conversation and allow that conversation to thwart what God is trying to do in your life. It is a very dangerous thing, y'all. Hear me when I say this. It is a very dangerous thing to allow somebody else's mouth to be on what God is trying to create for you. You have to be willing to properly measure what you're hearing, to measure who's saying it, and to give it proper, uh, proper credence uh, into their words. Oh, wow, yeah, God bless you. But it doesn't mean you got to own it and make it a reality to, into what you're becoming. All right. I would dare to say that you giving the wrong person permission to create a reality for you has allowed you to walk into a lot of Ishmael's. You have created Ishmael's, meaning that God made you a promise. And I'm about to deal with it because this is my whole this is my whole point this morning. God made you a promise. You and God talked about it. You knew that you and God were on the same page. You and God were good. And then you messed around and got around somebody that you loved that did not understand what God was saying. And they thwarted the reality of what God was trying to get you to believe. And they allowed you to birth something in a season they thought based off the, of their confession and their limited insight of what God was doing. They allowed you to create a reality that God was not trying to bring into your life. And I don't want your life to be filled with a whole bunch of Ishmael's. I don't want your destiny to be filled with a whole bunch of children that God did not desire or design for you to bring in reality in your life. I don't want your destiny steps to be marred by, by moments where you allowed somebody else to speak into you without them understanding all the conversation and or the context of the said conversation that you and God had had. Let me just go ahead and make it very practical. Let me bring it into reality. Because, hold on one second. When God began to speak to Abram after he left his father's house about um, his inheritance and he began to speak to him about his bloodline and the children that he would bring into the earth. The moment Abram heard it, the first thing he looked at was his, was his limited capacity, his age being far too far gone, and his inability to um, his inability to produce on the level that God was telling him was connected to his promise. Now hear me, God always call you to produce and to confess beyond the level where you're currently operating. If God is calling you to only say what you already got, it's not a real confession. But if God will push you to a place in prayer and push you to a place in confession that goes outside of what you already got, that goes outside of what you already see, if he's calling you to grasp and ascertain a reality that your eyes have yet to behold, I'm telling you, God will push you to a place in prayer that goes beyond the bounds of what you've seen what you've known, what you have felt. He'll push you outside of your comfort zone in your confession. Now, that doesn't mean that he's pushing you to a place that's causing you to confess a thing that he can't give you the ability to manage. But it means that when you're in the will of God, he'll begin to make you start talking about stuff that seems like it's outside of your scope, that makes it seem like it's outside of the reality of you walking into. Abram could not see. He nor Sarah bringing a child into the earth in their old age. He saw their age as the primary limitation of the blessing of God. But once he got the revelation that God was going to do a thing, that God promised him, I ain't going to let you leave this earth without an inheritance, without a son to walk into it for you. And I promise you, it ain't that nappy-headed boy lot. I got something that's going to come out of you that you have yet to see. 
Now, somebody ought to get excited just right there that God's got something that's going to come out of you that you ain't seen yet. He's got something that you're going to birth. He's got something you're going to bring to pass. He's got something that is designed for your destiny alone, that even if others don't see it and if others don't believe it, he's got something designed just for you. He's got something that he's put on the inside of you, that he is still stirring, that he's still brooding over, that he's waiting to bring into reality. If God God has said it. It is a guarantee that God will do it. And God is waiting for the divine opportunity to manage your mouth in such a way that he can bring into reality what you've yet to see. So here, let me, let me just make this point one on mouth management. That just because you have not seen it does not mean God is not going to produce. Just because your eyes have not beheld what the, the promise that God made you does not mean that God is not still a promise keeper. God releases promise promises in divine timing, meaning that God knows the time that your humanity can handle the divinity that he wants to release into the earth to properly steward what he's given you. Now, if God knows the timing of heaven and the timing of earth to send what you need right on time, you've got to believe that even if I ain't seen it yet, God is still going to send it in the right time, in the right way, and exactly the way that my heart and life needed to walk into my next. So the, the, the next part of mouth management is this. Once God has seen it or shown it to you, you can't allow someone else to thwart to what you've seen and or heard. Now, here's what people are good for. People are good for manipulating and using their intellect to allow faith to be canceled and to figure out what God is going to do in their own strength. Lord have mercy. People are amazing managers and manipulators of your revelation. They have the ability to try to figure out what God is doing. They have the ability to give allowance into your destiny to say, you know what, this is probably what he meant because there's no way that God meant it the way that you're interpreting it. Uh, you probably just missed or maybe you fell asleep on part of the instructions or maybe, you know, maybe something happened that caused you to miss the reality of what God was trying to say. When in all actuality, uh, you heard them right the first time. You just let the wrong person get your ear and cause you to create a new reality. Now, here's the thing. When Abram in Genesis 15 first talked to God and God promised him a seed, I can't imagine what Abram felt. I can't imagine the emotions that he felt. I can't even imagine the fact that he had already left everything that he knew. And now he's left in a posture where he has to rationalize what God has said or what God has said and cover it with his faith. He has to allow his faith to speak to his fear of not producing or leaving the earth without a child and believe, well, you know what? If God said it, it must be true. But look, he goes back home. He tells Sarah what's going on. And, and l listen to what happens. I'm going to read this to you so I'll make it all make sense. It says now uh, Genesis 16. I'm sorry. Genesis 16. Genesis 16 uh, is what I'm going to deal with very quickly this morning. All right, Genesis 16. It says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, you see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go in to my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. Guys, I cannot say this enough. You cannot allow somebody else's um, space of hearing what God said to you to create a reality outside of what God promised you. Now, if all you want to do is get a revelation from God and manage it with your intellect, let me tell you something. You don't even need a conversation with God for that. Go read your Bible, get a word, figure out which word best applies to you and your situation, and manipulate it however you want. Make it to be whatever you want it to be. All right? You don't need to even pray for God to give you insight. Just, just 
Let Just manipulate it however you want. Do whatever you want to do. But if you want to walk in a place of destiny and making destiny decisions, you have to be willing to allow um, your heart and the feelings of people to be put on the back burner so that you can make a reality out of what God said. Because I want to be, be clear when I say this, just because God said it doesn't mean it always hits your heart immediately. There are moments God makes you a promise and you don't even get the totality of what he said. Is that anybody else that God has ever told you something and they didn't make no sense to you when he said it? And so instead of uh, immediately walking into it, you had to kind of walk to the side. I'm like, all right, God, I need you to show me this one. Like, this ain't making no sense. I'm trying to get my heart to get it. It just ain't making no sense to me. I don't, I don't get it at all. All right. You ever been in a place where God has spoke very clearly? You know, it was the Lord, but because it didn't add up, you said, well, oh, Jesus. All right. So let me just try to see if there's a way that I can figure this piece out or do something a little bit different. You know, you have to, you know, you have a moment of reality where you try to manage it in your heart and in your life. Now, exactly where you say, God, you talking to me? Is it me? Is it me that you want? <laughs> Is it me that you're calling for? That word was mine. You know, where you just have that moment where your flesh wrestles with what's been downloaded into your spirit as what's been try as what's been downloaded it to you tries to change you into the revelation of what heaven has seen. All right, so I want I want to be clear. You are in familiar territory. Um, when you begin to talk about God, I don't know if I have the capacity, I don't know if I have the strength, I don't know if I'm yeah, I, I don't even know if I'm old enough to do this, or maybe I'm too old to do this. This. I just I just don't know. Uh, but there's got to be a place where what God said to you, you begin to properly steward it with your mouth. And it don't have to make sense to everybody else. You sitting around walking, talking about your your business and what God is going to do in you. Everybody ain't got to understand it. You talking about your children and your bloodline. It don't have to make sense to everybody else. God is giving you a revelation on your wife. He's giving you a revelation on your spouse and your family. It ain't got to make sense to everybody else. Everybody ain't got to understand it. But here's the thing, you can't allow those who are closest to you to cause you to manipulate God's promise because it doesn't look like what they thought it should. Now, here's the thing, when you put God's uh, word and what God gave you into the ears of those you love, it's very possible that it ain't going to look like what they thought it should look like. I'm going to give you all a perfect case in point. All right. Now, I've been holding this one. I'm going to go ahead and share this one now. Uh, when I, when I knew that God was causing and calling my family to make a transition out of uh, Tucson, there were things, I believe I spoke this part to you all before, mm, there were some very hard conversations I had to have. Uh, some of the first conversations I had to have were with the spiritual leaders in my life. I had to uh, run by them the thing that I felt like God was saying. Because I believe that everybody's life has to have accountability. You have to be um, measured by somebody. Somebody got to be responsible for the decision you're about to make. Meaning that no decision is made on your own. You've got to be able to have somebody in your corner who ain't your friend, who ain't your ace, that will be very critical about what you're about to do, that will check your heart about your motivation behind it, and that love God as much as they love you, that they are going to give you the counsel of the Lord as it pertains to your decision. Now, I met with my pastors. I shared with them what was going on in my life and what I felt like God was doing. Everybody was in sync. We were all in agreement. They didn't feel like I was going crazy. They didn't feel like I was starstruck or being an opportunist. They saw what God was doing and they said, go after it. And so those that was the easy part of the conversation. Now, the difficult part came when it came time for me to speak to my father. When I had to sit down and talk to my dad about what was about to happen, that's when it became extremely difficult. And I'm going to explain to you why. I sat down and talked to my dad. And I'm explaining to him uh, that we're about to move back to the South. We're about to do this for a reason uh, because... Um, we believe God is calling us to lead a church and plant a church uh, in, in the Atlanta area. My dad was excited at first. Now, my dad was excited because he wanted to have his...
Good morning, guys. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Good morning. What's up, Drew? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is well this morning. Y'all go ahead and invite your followers as you come in the room. Go ahead and invite your followers. Invite your followers. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> go ahead and invite your followers as you walk on in. Good morning. Don't, don't you walk in and leave somebody else out. Take an opportunity to invite your networks in and people that you're connected to. Good morning. Y'all, it is 5 a.m. here in Chicago. It's 5 a.m. I was going to leave it there. We know that we, my goodness, are dedicated to a thing. I'm telling you, it is well. It is well. Yep, Cynthia, you're right with me, so I know you understand. And thank you for your faithfulness to this. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Tanya. <laughs> all right, y'all invited your folks in. Y'all invited your family, your friend, mom and them, and all them folk. All right, so we in. Those that are on the free conference call line this morning, thank you for being on. Thank you for being in. Um, yeah, let them fight you. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everyone is doing well this morning, guys. I'm gonna uh, share with you, uh, kind of dealing with. Good morning. Dealing with, uh, dealing along the same lines of what we dealt with yesterday. Dealing with our confessions, and um, God gave me a piece this morning that is still kind of blessing my life all right so i'm i'm praying that it blesses everybody else it is well i'm praying that it blesses y'all the way that it's still touching me all right so i want to jump into it uh you're more than welcome um i want to go ahead and jump into it uh, let's pray father thank you for the power of our tongue and the power of our confession uh now this morning give us the ability to see your perspective on uh, everything that we say and do, and we love you for managing our mouths and teaching us how to manage our mouths with everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. It is a tragedy to understand that you have the ability to create a blessing with your mouth, but to use it to curse what God is doing. It is impossible for you to speak words of faith and then turn around and counsel them by what you see and or the negativity of your current situation. Uh, it is very possible for you to speak and be full of the blessing of the Lord, but then uh, coming out of prayer or coming out of a posture where you've tried to draw close to God, you use that same um, energy or fervor that you had and use it in uh, a very counterproductive way and use it to cancel out the very thing that you've prayed for. Uh, it is impossible to speak a thing in faith and then lose faith before you see the reality of what you said come, come to pass. So your heart has to remain um, consistent and your mouth has to remain consistent. All right. I believe that for many, uh, the issue does not come when it uh, comes to believing God for what he said could happen. That may be part of it, but it's not the big issue. The big issue is we uh, lose touch with the reality of managing our mouths. We forget that just because we say it in prayer doesn't mean that when we come out of prayer, we can change what we're saying. Uh, there has to be an alignment. Our lives have to be in sync and we have to continue to believe God for what we said becoming a reality in everything that we do. It means that there must be a singularity to who we are. We can't have dual personalities, dual activity, and expect to see the fullness of what God has designed and desires for our lives. We have to be in sync. Our hearts have to be in sync. Our conversation has to be in sync. And we have to learn how to manage our mouths, meaning that just because you don't currently see it the way that you want to see it 
doesn't mean it gives you permission to say it any other way than what God has said it. You have to have the ability to move beyond the way that you feel in a moment to say, until I see what God has said, I've got to keep doing it God's way. All right, there has to be a place. I'm trying to just go ahead and uh, get into the teaching aspect of this. There has to be a place where you understand that you cannot be frivolous with your mouth, but you have to manage your mouth. You have to learn how to bridle your tongue, to not allow a confession to be released that is out of alignment and out of sync with what you've just been praying about and praying for. You cannot be flagrant. And you're going to hear me say this word several times uh, this week, or this, yeah, this, definitely this week. You can't be flagrant with your mouth. You can't say one thing one moment and then turn around and say another thing. And I'm going to go to a story in, it, in, in just a moment. Uh, you can't can't allow your mouth to be flagrant. You can't allow your actions to be flagrant. You have to be willing to see the goodness of the Lord in everything that you do and not allow what you feel or what you see in a moment to stop you from becoming what God is creating you to be. Your mouth has to be clear of anything that's not like God so that you can have the right conversations and the right management thereof. Now, I would dare to say that there are people who miss out on the blessing of the Lord just because they don't know how to manage their mouths. Their mouths are too loose, all right? And so this is why I want to go, go ahead and deal with it. Now, a loose mouth really deals with a hard posture and position, and it also deals with the mind and a mentality. If your mouth is loose and always in a place where you can pray one thing and, uh, and then turn around and confess something else. All right, so you can say, well, God, I'm believing you that you're going to give me stability on my job. Let me just go ahead and I'll, I'll take it from this angle. All right, if you say that, God, I believe you're going to give me stability on the job because it's a job you called me to. But then in the next moment, you're in a corner with friends gossiping about your coworkers and about your uh, employer and about the company as a whole. How can God trust you? to be faithful with what you just confessed the first time and saying that this was the job he sent you, but you're always complaining about gossiping with or gossiping about the very people he's called you to serve in that capacity. You have literally cursed your prayer. You have canceled it out because you did not believe God for what you prayed for. So this is what I want you to understand. You, you, you don't have the right and or responsibility to not manage your mouth because it doesn't mean that things are not going to get on your nerves, that things are not going to push you to the edge, that there's not going to be a moment where you want to feel a certain way. I don't want to negate that reality, but what I do want to be sure that you are very cautious of is that you don't counsel what you've been praying for, that what you've been praying about, all in a moment of frustration because you don't see God in it or God is not doing a thing quick enough or the way that you want them to do it. Better yet, and this is really what I want to get to this morning, you got to be careful that you don't let other people manage your reality with their mouths. This is, this is good to me. Here it is. <laughs> it is one thing for you to mismanage your own reality, but it's another thing for you to allow other people to mismanage your reality based on their limited insight of what God is doing and how God is doing a thing. The moment you allow somebody else's mouth to create your reality, you have given them control over your destiny, everything you'll birth, everything you'll bring to pass. It is a dangerous place to be, to get, give somebody else permission to create a reality for your life. Life that is outside of the will of God. And anytime you feel free to give someone else permission to create for you what God did not design, you are entering a dangerous space because if they have enough authority to begin to help call a thing into existence in your life and you have given them right rule and responsibility to do so, they have the ability to alter the thing that God has already spoken to you and that you have prayed about. All right, so 
uh, another part of mouth management. This is this is gonna help you. Is not just managing your mouth, but managing the mouth that you allow to speak into the destiny that God has designed for your life. You cannot allow everybody to speak over you, to speak into you, to tell you what God is saying, and it's outside of what God is trying to do in you. Better yet, you cannot entertain every conversation and allow that conversation to thwart what God is trying to do in your life. It is a very dangerous thing, y'all. Hear me when I say this. It is a very dangerous thing to allow somebody else's mouth to be on what God is trying to create for you. You have to be willing to properly measure what you're hearing, to measure who's saying it, and to give it proper, uh, proper credence uh, into their words. Oh, wow, yeah, God bless you. But it doesn't mean you've got to own it and make it a reality to, into what you're becoming. All right. I would dare to say that you giving the wrong person permission to create a reality for you has allowed you to walk into a lot of Ishmael's. You have created Ishmael's, meaning that God made you a promise. And I'm about to deal with it because this is my whole this is my whole point this morning. God made you a promise. You and God talked about it. You knew that you and God were on the same page. You and God were good. And then you messed around and got around somebody that you loved that did not understand what God was saying. And they thwarted the reality of what God was trying to get you to believe. And they allowed you to birth something in a season they thought based off the, of their confession and their limited insight of what God was doing. They allowed you to create a reality that God was not trying to bring into your life. And I don't want your life to be filled with a whole bunch of Ishmael's. I don't want your destiny to be filled with a whole bunch of children that God did not desire or design for you to bring in reality in your life. I don't want your destiny steps to be marred by, by moments where you allowed somebody else to speak into you without them understanding all the conversation and or the context of the said conversation that you and God had had. Let me just go ahead and make it very practical. Let me bring it into reality. Because, hold on one second. When God began to speak to Abram after he left his father's house about uh, his inheritance and he began to speak to him about his bloodline and the children that he would bring into the earth. The moment Abram heard it, the first thing he looked at was his, was his limited capacity, his age being far too far gone, and his inability to um, his inability to produce on the level that God was telling him was connected to his promise. Now hear me, God always called you to produce and to confess beyond the level where you're currently operating. If God is calling you to only say what you already got, it's not a real confession. But if God will push you to a place in prayer and push you to a place in confession that goes outside of what you already got, that goes outside of what you already see, if he's calling you to grasp and ascertain a reality that your eyes have yet to behold, I'm telling you, God will push you to a place in prayer that goes beyond the bounds of what you've seen what you've known, what you have felt. And he'll push you outside of your comfort zone in your confession. Now, that doesn't mean that he's pushing you to a place that's causing you to confess a thing that he can't give you the ability to manage. But it means that when you're in the will of God, he'll begin to make you start talking about stuff that seems like it's outside of your scope, that makes it seem like it's outside of the reality of you walking into. Abram could not see. He nor Sarah bringing a child into the earth in their old age. He saw their age as the primary limitation of the blessing of God. But once he got the revelation that God was going to do a thing, that God promised him, I ain't going to let you leave this earth without an inheritance, without a son to walk into it for you. And I promise you, it ain't that nappy-headed boy locked. I got something that's going to come out of you that you have yet to see. 
Now, somebody ought to get excited just right there that God's got something that's going to come out of you that you ain't seen yet. He's got something that you're going to birth. He's got something you're going to bring to pass. He's got something that is designed for your destiny alone, that even if others don't see it and if others don't believe it, he's got something designed just for you. He's got something that he's put on the inside of you, that he is still stirring, that he's still brooding over, that he's waiting to bring into reality. If God God has said it. It is a guarantee that God will do it. And God is waiting for the divine opportunity to manage your mouth in such a way that he can bring into reality what you've yet to see. So here, let, let me just make this point one on mouth management. That just because you have not seen it does not mean God is not going to produce. Just because your eyes have not beheld what the, the promise that God made you does not mean that God is not still a promise keeper. God releases promise in divine timing, meaning that God knows the time that your humanity can handle the divinity that he wants to release into the earth to properly steward what he's given you. Now, if God knows the timing of heaven and the timing of earth to send what you need right on time, you've got to believe that even if I ain't seen it yet, God is still going to send it in the right time, in the right way, and exactly the way that my heart and life needed to walk into my next. So the, the, the next part of mouth management is this. Once God has seen it or shown it to you, you can't allow someone else to thwart to what you've seen and or heard. Now, here's what people are good for. People are good for manipulating and using their intellect to allow faith to be canceled and to figure out what God is going to do in their own strength. Lord have mercy. People are amazing managers and manipulators of your revelation. They have the ability to try to figure out what God is doing. They have the ability to give allowance into your destiny to say, you know what, this is probably what he meant because there's no way that God meant it the way that you're interpreting it. Uh, you probably just missed or maybe you fell asleep on part of the instructions or maybe, you know, maybe something happened that caused you to miss the reality of what God was trying to say. When in all actuality, uh, you heard them right the first time. You just let the wrong person get your ear and cause you to create a new reality. Now, here's the thing. When Abram in Genesis 15 first talked to God and God promised him a seed, I can't imagine what Abram felt. I can't imagine the emotions that he felt. I can't even imagine the fact that he had already left everything that he knew. And now he's left in a posture where he has to rationalize what God has said or what God has said and cover it with his faith. He has to allow his faith to speak to his fear of not producing or leaving the earth without a child and believe, well, you know what? If God said it, it must be true. But look, he goes back home. He tells Sarah what's going on. And, and li listen to what happens. I'm going to read this to you so I'll make it all make sense. And it says now, uh, Genesis 16, I'm sorry, Genesis 16, Genesis 16 uh, is what I'm going to deal with very quickly this morning. All right, Genesis 16. It says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, you see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go in to my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. Guys, I cannot say this enough. You cannot allow somebody else's um, space of hearing what God said to you to create a reality outside of what God promised you. Now, if all you want to do is get a revelation from God and manage it with your intellect, let me tell you something. You don't even need a conversation with God for that. Go read your Bible, get a word, figure out which word best applies to you and your situation, and manipulate it however you want. Make it to be whatever you want it to be, all right? You don't need to even pray for God to give you insight. Just, just 
let just manipulate and have you want. Do whatever you want to do. But if you want to walk in a place of destiny and making destiny decisions, you have to be willing to allow um, your heart and the feelings of people to be put on the back burner so that you can make a reality out of what God said. Because I want to be, be clear when I say this, just because God said it doesn't mean it always hits your heart immediately. There are moments God makes you a promise and you don't even get the totality of what he said. Is that anybody else that God has ever told you something and it didn't make no sense to you when he said it? And so instead of uh, immediately walking into it, you had to kind of walk to the side and like, all right, God, I need you to show me this one. Like, this ain't making no sense. I'm trying to get my heart to get it. It just ain't making no sense to me. I don't, I don't get it at all. All right. You ever been in a place where God has spoke very clearly? You know, it was the Lord, but because it didn't add up, you said, well, oh, Jesus. All right. So let me just try to see if there's a way that I can figure this piece out or do something a little bit different. You know, you have to, you know, you have a moment of reality where you try to manage it in your heart and in your life. Now, exactly where you say, God, you talking to me? Is it me? Is it me that you want? <laughs> Is it me that you're calling for? That word was mine. You know, where you just have that moment where your flesh wrestles with what's been downloaded into your spirit as what's been try as what's been downloaded into you tries to change you into the revelation of what heaven has seen. All right, so I want I want to be clear. You are in familiar territory. Um when you begin to talk about God, I don't know if I have the capacity, I don't know if I have the strength, I don't know if I'm yeah, I, I don't even know if I'm old enough to do this, or maybe I'm too old to do this. I just, I just don't know. Uh, but there's got to be a place where what God said to you, you begin to properly steward it with your mouth. And it don't have to make sense to everybody else. You sitting around walking, talking about your your business and what God is going to do in you. Everybody ain't got to understand it. You're talking about your children and your bloodline. You don't have to make sense to everybody else. God is giving you a revelation on your wife. He's giving you a revelation on your spouse and your family. It ain't got to make sense to everybody else. Everybody ain't got to understand it. But here's the thing. You can't allow those who are closest to you to cause you to manipulate God's promise because it doesn't look like what they thought it should. Now, here's the thing. When you put God's uh, word and what God gave you into the ears of those you love, it's very possible that it ain't going to look like what they thought it should look like. I'm going to give you all a perfect case in point. All right. Now, I've been holding this one. I'm going to go ahead and share this one now. Uh, when I when I knew that God was causing and calling my family to make a transition out of uh, Tucson, there were things, I believe I spoke this part to you all before. Mm, there were some very hard conversations I had to have. Uh, some of the first conversations I had to have were with the spiritual leaders in my life. I had to uh, run by them the thing that I felt like God was saying because I believe that everybody's life has to have accountability. You have to be um, measured by somebody. Somebody got to be responsible for the decision you're about to make, meaning that no decision is made on your own. You've got to be able to have somebody in your corner who ain't your friend, who ain't your ace, that will be very critical about what you're about to do, that will check your heart about your motivation behind it, and that love God as much as they love you, that they are going to give you the counsel of the Lord as it pertains to your decision. Now, I met with my pastors. I shared with them what was going on in my life and what I felt like God was doing. Everybody was in sync. We were all in agreement. They didn't feel like I was going crazy. They didn't feel like I was starstruck or being an opportunist. They saw what God was doing and they said, go after it. And so those that was the easy part of the conversation. Now, the difficult part came when it came time for me to speak to my father. When I had to sit down and talk to my dad about what was about to happen, that's when it became extremely difficult. And I'm going to explain to you why. I sat down and talked to my dad, and I'm explaining to him uh, that we're about to move back to the South. We're about to do this for a reason uh, because... Um, we believe God is calling us to lead a church and plant a church 
uh, in, in the Atlanta area. My dad was excited at first. Now, my dad was excited because he wanted to have his grandchildren that closer to him. So his first thing was, yes, I got to fly out to Arizona. My kids will be close to me. I can come see them whenever I want to. And, you know, this is a good thing. And then when he realized that I wasn't going in to take over a church, everything changed. My dad thought that we were moving here to um, take over an existing church. He did not understand that we were coming here to literally start a church from the ground up. The minute he began to see and understand that, everything shifted. It shifted so dramatically because, and I understand the one part and aspect of it. His number one concern was the provider. How are you going to take care of your children? How are you going to take care of your wife? Who going to cover your insurance? How are my grandkids going to get fed? You can think it. He asked it. He asked everything um, conceivable to the natural ear, eye, and understanding. If it, was me, if it could be asked, he asked it. And not only did he ask it, he began to tell me, I just don't think this is a good idea. You're leaving security. You're leaving everything that you know. Um, maybe you should wait a year because this seems so fast. Maybe you should do this in a year. Maybe you should do it in two years. You know, maybe you should wait till you get a little bit older, can save a little bit more money, and then do it then. I mean, he gave every rational reason as to why we should not leave Tucson and began to plant a church from the ground up. And every time he would give me logic, here were the only words I could say to him. Dad, I love you, but I love you enough to tell you that I don't have time for you to feed me with what you see when I know what God has said. You gotta trust me. If God is in it, I can't worry about a dollar bill. I can't worry about where we're going to live. I can't worry about who's going to come. I can't worry about any of those. All I can know is that I know that God gave the word, and this is the time we got to do it. I'll, all I can tell you is that I believe with everything in me, this is what God is calling us to. And I don't know if two people going to show up. I don't know if 200 going to show up. I don't know who, I don't know who going to come. All I know is that if this is what God has downloaded into me, God's got to God's got to have a way that He gonna provide for it. Now, do do I know where my pay paycheck is gonna be coming from? Don't don't have a clue. All right, uh, don't don't have a clue. Not the smallest inkling and or inclination where things are gonna happen. But I do promise you this: God has never failed me. He has never let me down. And I don't believe that He needs an established church for me to make it happen. I believe that God can give us the ability to walk into absolutely nothing and create a reality that we have not seen. I believe that God, and, and this was the word that Apostle gave me, it was very powerful truth, but it helped me manage my mouth. Uh, I, I said, I believe that God is going to send the widows of Zarephath to, to send everything that we need. God has already got provision made, and I ain't got to go looking for provision. He's already provided it. So all I've got to do is walk in the totality of what God is doing and what God desires to see become a reality in our life. And I'm telling you, it was every day. He got in my wife's ear and tried to use my wife to get in my ear to cause me to overanalyze and over critique what I felt like God was doing. And finally, and Fanick and I had several conversations. I'm like, Sugar, this is what I need you to do. I don't need you to tell me anything else that dad is saying. And if dad says anything else to you, just say we trust him. All right. All we can do is trust God. It's going to happen however it happens. Now, listen. Because there was a part of her that began to worry about as well. What are we going to do with our children? How is this going to happen? How is that going to happen? She began to be overly concerned about the things that we could not control. And all I knew was that I had a word from God that this was the season for us to plan. And if we were going to do it, it was the time for us to do it. I had to silence everybody. I'm like, listen, if y'all don't understand, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, just don't bring it to me right now. Uh, all right, I, I'll coddle your stuff and, and later, but right now, 
It's time for me to build a thing. And I cannot allow the negativity of outside sources to kill the conviction of what God has spoke to me about the very thing that he's calling me to build. I, you cannot afford to let everybody's opinion stop you from moving and doing what God is calling you to do now. If you allow the opinions of people to create a new reality for you, you're not going to negate the promise of God, but you're going to delay it in a time when he was ready to give it to you. And what I don't want you to deal with is unnecessary delays. I don't want your destiny to deal with a delay that was not scheduled from heaven. I don't want your destiny to walk in a moment where you are missing what God wants for you now because you allowed somebody else to change where your eyes were focused, where your heart was focused, and to cause you to be delayed unnecessarily. Now listen, don't allow their mouth to create a reality for you that you've got to manage as well. Do not allow somebody else's fear to be imposed on your destiny that causes you to believe and question God on whether or not you can really walk into it. If you really believe God, you got to believe him based on uh, against the, pos the possible opinions of people. You got to be willing to go against the grain. You got to be willing to swim against the current. You've got to be willing to get yourself in outside of the comfort zone of what you've seen, what you've known, what they got to say about it, how they feel about it. I'm telling you, if you're going to confess what God has said, you got to learn how to manage your mouths, but you also got to manage the mouths that are speaking into where you're trying to go. Because what will happen, you can let somebody that you love and that's very close to you have your ear, get your attention, and cause you to create a reality that God wouldn't try to push you towards. I, I want you to hear me when I say this. Until you can get in the place where you can be strong enough to say, God, I don't care what anybody else thinks about this. I am going after what you have said. Now, here's the thing. Some of us speak prematurely to people about what God has promised because we just heard it for the first time and in us hearing it for the first time, we are not even fully convinced yet that God is going to make it a reality. That's why your prayer life is so important because just because God said it the first time, you've got to get the revelation that God is going to do what he said. And sometimes that takes more than one prayer interaction. Sometimes that takes you laying prostrate before God for a couple weeks before you're ready to walk into it. And and begin to tell somebody about it. Sometimes you can't do it as quick as you want to and you can't share it with everybody as soon as you want to because you've got to grasp and allow that uh, revelation to take root in your heart of what God is about to do. Otherwise, you're going to allow somebody to help you create a new reality based on what God said. This is what happened to Sarah. She said, listen, I'm too old. I, I, I know what God told you. He didn't say it to me. I, I'm too old to be having children. I ain't got time to be birthing no kids. Look, everything in me is just dried up, all right? I, I ain't got nothing for them to suck on. Everything dry. Every, ain't nothing gonna work. But listen, I got this uh, young tenderoni. Her name is Hagar. She serves me every day. I know that she's fertile. Her eggs are still moving. I know that she ain't dried up. Maybe what God was trying to tell you was that he was going to use somebody that was serving me to create a new reality. I know tenderoni. I stretched for that one, right? To create a new reality in your life. And what he did was he allowed the woman that he loved to pervert the reality of what God was trying to create and to cause his mouth in more ways than one to mismanage what God was trying to say. Now listen, so after Abram had, so listen, verse two, and maybe that I shall, that, that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. Now listen, once you've got a confession, you've got, and once you have a revelation, you got to be careful of the voices you choose to listen to. You have to be careful that everybody and everything doesn't have entrance, access, and availability for your destiny. You can't allow distractions to come in that cause you to go in another direction from what God was doing. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, 
took Hagar, the Egyptian, her slave girl, and gave her to her husband, Abram, as a wife. Y'all, are y'all listening to this? He went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abram, may the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my slave girl to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord's judge between me and you. That is why, hear me, this is why you can't allow flesh to um, intervene in what faith has said. His wife got mad at him for doing the very thing that she told him to do because it didn't happen the way that she thought it was going to happen. Now, listen, that's why you don't have space for somebody else to have opportunity in what God is designing in your life. This is why you got to close the door. You got to shut your ear gates and you can't allow people to give their divine intervention into what God has said. It ain't going to make sense to them, but sometimes you just waiting on God and you confessing continually what God has said. You know what? You know what, Sarah? I know we old. I know I'm old. But hear me. It is well. Everything's going to be all right. If God has said it, God's going to do it. It is well. All right, y'all, y'all know I got to intertwine it as well back in there. It may not make sense to us right now. It may not even seem like it become, can become a reality. But you know what? It is well. We're just going to be patient. We're going to wait on God. And if it does take another 10 years, if it takes another 20 years, if God said it, it's well. It's going to happen. And we're going to see it in the land of the living. Now, listen. Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, but she gave birth to Ishmael out of a posture of flesh and fear. Now, the one thing that your destiny doesn't need is anybody that is fearful of a reality of a God that is bigger than them and that can perform more powerfully than them and that can make something come in, come to life in a much more impactful way than they can. Your destiny, it doesn't just demand a decision. It bears it demands your elimination of fearful voices that do not see what God has said. Now, listen, let me fast forward a little bit because even when Sarah was 89 years old, 88, 89 years old, and the angels of the Lord came to speak to uh, Abram, once, once we flip over to Genesis 19, Genesis 20, all right, even then, when the angel of the Lord said, this time next year, uh, now you have uh, created these other realities, but by this time next year, you're going to bring forth a child. The Bible says that Sarah was eavesdropping, and in her eavesdropping, she heard the angel of the Lord speak this word, and what she said, no, matter of fact, it said she began to laugh within herself, like now, now that but I'm old, I'm 89 years old, I, I don't feel like changing no diapers, I don't feel like running behind no kids, I, I, I don't feel like going to no soccer games, I don't feel like all this happening now, and now you tell me I'm going to give birth to a child, ha, <laughs> let's see the next time Abram gets these cookies, let's see the next time I let Abraham up in this, I'm too old, this ain't going to happen now, I have missed my time, I have missed my promise, and look, God looks at him, looks at Sarah and says, you know, why, why why is she laughing? The angels are why, why is she laughing at the Lord? All right. This is why, I'm sorry, guys. All right. I just, I love painting pictures. All right. Why, why is she laughing? Why is she laughing at what we've said? And she said, you know what? I didn't laugh. But look, a year later, she gave birth to the very thing that she laughed at a year before. God will make will prove himself and make a believer out of the very ones that didn't believe with you. God will use them as the conduit to make it all become a reality. Hear me. God will use the people that did not believe but still were a part of the design. Yep, and name your child laughter. All right? <laughs> and make them a part of the design that he's using to set up the backdrop of your destiny. Here's the big thing I want you all to understand. And um, I'm going to start, I'm going to pray for you in just a second. I want you to understand that you can't allow anybody else to use their mouths to manipulate your destiny. And you can't allow their confessions to cause you to be short-sighted about the promises of God. Just because they don't see it doesn't mean God didn't say it. God gave them a limited perspective and a limited purview into what he was creating you to be. And just because they don't see it doesn't mean that God didn't say it. So I don't want you to allow people's limited role 
limited capacity and limited ability to cause you to miss the grandeur of what God wants to do in your life. I don't want you to feel like you have missed the mark just because your friend didn't see it, because your family didn't see it, because you can't find anybody else to agree with you. Even if they don't agree with you and it don't make no sense to them, if God has said it, he can grow you into it. Hear what I just said. If God said it, he can grow you into it. Meaning that there are things that God will show you, but the only way you're going to get there if he can grow you up in the process. Because if he gives it to you as soon as he shows it to you, you probably don't have the capacity to manage it. But he's showing you a destination on the road to your destiny where he's trying to grow you into it. All right, so I want you to understand that everything God shows you today is not necessarily for today. He's trying to grow you into a thing. That's why, and this is what I love about God, he'll give you a glimpse into what you want to see, but he won't show you the path that you're going to have to take to grow into that role. He'll show you an end goal, an end plan, part of what he is desiring on your path to destiny. And we get excited, we shout about it. But then he doesn't show you all the hell you're going to have to go through, all the people you're going to lose, everything he had to stretch in you, everything he's got to manipulate to make you bigger, how he's got to expand your heart, how he's got to expand your patience, how he's got to let you lose some friends, how you got to lose um, some weight that's been on your heart. He doesn't show you everything you're going to have to lose in the midst of it. God gives you a glimpse of where he has taken you to prove to you he can grow you up there. But very rarely are you ready to walk in its fullness right away. You got to be tested. You got to be proven. He's got to try you. He's got to work some stuff out of you. So listen, God will give you a revelation for one purpose to grow you up. And so God, God, even when he told Abram that he was going to, he wasn't going to die without a son being born in the earth. He wasn't telling them that to tell him that you're going to have a child tomorrow. He was telling them that to see how well he could manage the revelation in the midst of getting the word and knowing that he had a promise. So please, please hear me when I say this. Just because God showed it to you today, don't mean you're ready to walk into it today. God's got to prove you. He's got to try you. He's got, to, he's got to show you a thing and not show you the path you got to walk on to get it just to see how long you can hold on and to work some other stuff in and out of your soul. All right. Uh, so there are there's a trial by fire, meaning that God will give you the next step of your destiny. But the only way you can walk there is you walking through the fire. Meaning that if he's going to take you to the fire, he's going to burn up everything off you that don't need to be there. And the only thing that's going to be left standing are the things that are attached to the next season. That's why you cannot be overly frustrated when people don't see it and they walk out of your life or they call you crazy or anything else for what God is calling you to. You cannot run the risk of being frustrated over the fact that people don't get it. And you can't allow what they don't get to change your confession. You cannot say, you know what? God promised me a son, so maybe if I just go get me a stripper and do what I do, everything's going to be all right. Or maybe if I just find my best friend, we, we, we do it together, everything's going to be good. No, you've got to have a razor eye focus and stop trying to make it happen for God. And you can't allow somebody else's fear to be imposed on your destiny and cause you to miss what God is saying. You do not have the grace that gives you the ability to always create a reality out of what God said. You have to have the power. You have to have the focus to walk into what God is doing in your heart and in your life so that you can become everything that he's designed and that he is desiring to make you. So this morning, I am praying for the imposition of people on your destiny. And I'm praying that God will give you the ability to ward off the words of people so that you can continue to confess what God has said about you. I'm declaring that you will not birth an Ishmael in the earth, but better yet, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
you will not create a thing in the wrong timing and in the wrong season because you allow people to give you a reality that was outside of God's will. But instead, God is going to give you a focus. He's going to give you a precision. He's going to give you the ability to operate and declare a thing before you even see it. The power of life and death is in your tongue, and you are not going to use an opportunity to create life to speak death just because you don't see it yet. I am praying for your ability to have your eyes focused on what God said and to not attempt to create a reality that goes outside of his will. I'm declaring over you, you will not be overly frustrated with the process, but you're going to allow God to work everything out of you that needs to be worked out of you so that you can apprehend what he said. I am praying that in the midst of those who love you, attempting to give you words based on their limited perspective, that you do not internalize what they say, but instead you own in totality what God has said. I'm declaring over you that you will not, <clears throat> you will not walk in a season Will you allow people to manipulate your destiny based on what they heard or what they said that does not sync or line up with what God has said about you? That now God has given you a reality. He has given you a truth. He has given you a power to walk into that exceeds what you've known, what you've seen before, and how you've seen it. I am praying for you that you completely apprehend the revelation God has given you and that you allow him to grow you up in the process. That you you allow the Spirit of God to stretch you, to grow you, and to make you something better and bigger than you've ever been before. And I pray that as God stretches you in this season and He gives you the ability to put your hands on what is said about you, that you will not mismanage it by putting it in the wrong ears and in the wrong hands of people that do not know how to manage your life. I declare that this is a season where God is going big. He is expanding you so he can pour more of him, so he can show you everything that needs to be done in your destiny. And so I'm praying that as God does his expansion and his work in your heart and your life, that you will not allow soul ties or familiar, familial voices that cause you to miss what it promised. Now, God, I'm praying for the strength of every son and daughter of yours on this scope this morning, that they won't miss another moment trying to make people comfortable in what you have caused them to manage with their mouths, that they won't be satisfied with people being happy, but them being depressed, that they will not be people pleasers more than they desire to please you and to see your kingdom come and your will be done. I bind the pleasing spirit in their soul that wants everybody else to be comfortable while they compromise their destiny. And I declare that not another moment will they run the risk of losing what you gave them, trying to make everybody else happy. But instead, they are going to see your goodness. They are going to see your strength. They are going to see your will become a reality in everything that you have called them to be. In this season, they're going to see it come to pass. I declare no more Ishmael's. Our mouths will not create a false thing because we cannot apprehend and or understand what God is trying to do right now. We will not birth a thing in the earth that God did not design or design for us to release. We will only produce the promise. We will only produce the promise. We will only produce the promise. And we don't care if it happens in the same season. We don't care if it happens two years from now. We don't care if it happens 10 years from now. Our mouths are not going to curse what you called into reality. We are not going to birth and Ishmael in this season. We are not going to allow our mouths to be manipulated or our promise to be thwarted by short-sighted people and people with limited vision. We're going to put our hands on what God has said. We're going to put our hands on what you have promised, and we're going to go after it with power and with demonstration. And this morning, I honor you because we are about to walk in a reality that we have prayed about, but we in certain parts of us did not even 
believe it could come true. We're about to walk into a new reality, a new place of faith, a new place of revelation, all because we know that you're the God that started a thing, and because you started it, you're going to bring it to pass. You're going to bring everything into reality as it pertains to our destiny and our purpose and our call and who you want us to be and how you want us to be it. No more Ishmael's, no more miscarriages. We're not going to miss your promise in the season, fooling around with people that cannot see it. We love them, but we got to hold true to what you said. All right, so Father, we love you and thank you for the ability to walk into your promise. And we know it is going to be well because you said it, and because you said it, it's going to become a reality in our lives. So we hold true to you and nothing else. You are the author. Hallelujah. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one that spoke it. You are the one that created it. And you're the one that can hold it up. And so it is well. And we're going to see everything that you got for us in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen. If you know you ain't going to allow your mouth to mess over what God promised you, throw some hearts up there on the screen and just put it as well. I need your it as well. Amen. It is well. It is well, it is well, it is well. You're going to see what it said in the land of the living. You're going to see it. Y'all are blessing me with this. It is well. It is well. It's going to be, it's going to be well. You're going to see it. You're going to see what he said. Hallelujah. He's going to prove himself to you and to your bloodline and to your family. He's going to prove himself. All right. Ah. Updates real quick. Let's run through them. Y'all, it is well, as well, as well. Amen. Amen, Nazio. Um, Let's run through our updates real quick. Go back to sleep. I'm so <laughs> Go back to sleep, Lord have mercy. Go back to sleep. You got work in a couple hours. Go back to sleep. I'm being very blessed by my friends from Tucson who are waking up what at 3 a.m. for them. Lord have mercy, 3 a.m. to be a part of what we're doing. I'm gonna have to tell them to just catch the replay because this is just, I mean, it's a sacrifice. Lord have mercy. Um, yeah, let me let me run through. Let me run through just a couple updates real quick. Y'all, don't forget this Saturday. Everybody say this Saturday. This Saturday, we are in prayer. Y'all come on with it. AllNationsATL.org. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, send an email to AllNationsATL at gmail.com. All right. So thank you. Uh, Callie, you and Callie, Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ. It's about to be 4 a.m. there. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, this Saturday, everybody say it with me. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Uh, 11 o'clock corporate prayer, uh, vision training. We're going to all apprehend and grasp this vision in a way that makes us bring into reality what God wants us to do on the earth and in the region and the city of Atlanta. We got prayer and training, all right? I, um, I've got to fly out Saturday night, but you better believe I'm going to be there Saturday morning. Uh, 4386 Chamblee Dunwoody Road is where training is taking place. It'll be in person. It will be in person. So if you're in the Atlanta area, we invite you out to join us at the Holiday Inn um, on the uh, Atlanta perimeter. All right, at 11 o'clock, we're praying together. We're training together. We're preparing for the vision. <laughs> we'll go try to record it. We got to do a private scope or something. All right, we're doing prayer and training and preparation for what we're about to do in the city. All right, so this week is very specific. I'm going to try my best. I promise you, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try to do a private scope. I'll have to get Aaron to send something out for me uh, so I can do a private scope for it. All right. I don't want to do a public one, but I will I will do a private one for us. All right. For um, our tribe. Now, <laughs> I love y'all. Yeah, there's a private scope where we can invite you. I have to. I, I, I want to do it private. All right. I don't want to. The pieces I want to share, I don't want to just uh, share them openly yet. So there are some pieces. Of, but we can invite you in. If you're in the Atlanta area, I'm, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to tell you how. All right. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this. All right. Now, um, 
I'll be sure we microphone the meeting. That's a very good observation from last time. Uh, all right, so here it is. Um, 11 o'clock, our corporate intercession and a vision training at 11 a.m. at the Holiday Inn on Chamley Dunwoody Road um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Would love for you, if you're in the Atlanta area, to come out and be a part and see what God is doing, see what God is saying to us. Um, just come be a part. All right. Um, then Monday the 29th, August the 29th, our music ministry training. We've got a special guest that's going to come in to help start navigating some very important pieces with us musically. Would love for you to come and be a part of that. Uh, so if you sing, um, in particular if you sing or you play an instrument, uh, we would love for you to get be a part of that. Lord, let you get a flight, Jesus Christ. If you're going to get a flight, this is where I want you to get a flight to. Our next Monday Night Madness. Our next Monday Night Madness is going to be... Somebody put the date, put it up there, please. When's our next Monday Night Madness? When is it? September the 5th. Boom, there it is. Uh, September the 5th is our next Monday Night Bad Madness. August 29th is our music ministry. Labor Day is our next Monday Night Madness. I would love, let me tell you, I would love for you all to be a part of our next Monday Night Madness on September the 5th at... 7 p.m. It will be myself and a very special guest by the name of Benita Washington, probably one of the most amazing worship leaders um, I have heard, uh, probably one of the most amazing worship leaders. Okay, so Diamond Prentice. Um, da, 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 da. Brian, write that down for me. Diamond Princess, that handle. So we'll remember when we do the private scope to get it in. Um, also, you can send an email. All right, you can send an email so we can get you on everything that we're doing. Um, yes, let's push that flyer. All right, let's push that flyer. Thank you. All right, so there is a, um, a young lady, and I want you all to help me in praying for her this week. Um, it got sent to me via email, and I think that this is very uh, important. Give me one moment. I'm just trying to find it. Um, okay. Um, her name is uh, JK. I want to. I pray I'm saying that right. Uh, she watches the repeats of these. Now, um, she's about to make one of the most major moves in her life. She is, is that you? Oh, did I say your name right? Did I say your name right? All right. So she is moving from, um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw the email, though. The email came to me, and I didn't want to miss it. Uh, she's moving from Boston to Atlanta. All right. She's making a huge faith move. Uh, Jaquay. Ah, okay. Like Janae. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it soon. I can't wait to meet you. All right. So, she's making a huge faith move from um, Boston to Atlanta. All right. And uh, I need you all this week to really be praying for her in the midst of this transition that God gives her the strength to bring into reality all that he's doing. And when she gets here, God, she's got family here, but she's going to need our support. She's going to need our encouragement. She's going to need us to push her. She's going to need us to surround her with love. And I don't even know everything that's going on in her life or her situation. But what I do know is that when we come together in prayer, we have a way of guarding people's heart in the midst of transition and giving them the strength to bring into reality all that God is trying to do in them. So listen, y'all encourage her real quick. Just send her some words real quick. Y'all real quickly, just type out some words, encourage her, give her some strength for today and for this week. She's making a big move. She's got eight days to do it. Y'all give her some love. Pray for her real quick. Just type some love out to her real quick. Give her some encouragement. Give her some encouragement because I want to know she's not alone in making this transition. That we are standing with her. All right. We're standing with her. 
so she can go back in if she can't see it all now she can watch the replay and she can get y'all's love it is well i love it i love it y'all y'all love on her real quick <laughs> we're standing with you you see all this love you see all this love we are with you all right so it's not I promise you it's not just you by yourself we got you we are standing with you all right it's gonna be well favor is gonna be on it god is gonna give you strength he's gonna give you everything you need for this season you got brothers and sisters in a tribe that already love you all right and we're gonna be covering you in the midst of your transition to see the goodness of the lord i'm declaring nothing's gonna call you back all right nothing is gonna call you back yes Nothing's going to call you back. Y'all encourage her. Nothing's going to call you back. Um, nothing's going to call you back. Uh, you are going to move and do what God has called for you to do in this season. It's going to be well. And even in the challenge of it, it's going to be well. God's going to give you strength for it. All right. Thank y'all. That's what I'm talking about. I love my tribe. I love y'all. love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. love you so much. All right. Guys, I've been on for an hour. Y'all know I'm at my limit. So I want to let you all go. And um, I pray you all have a good day. I'm going to be honest with you. It's 6 a.m. I'm going to call and check on my wife and my girls. I'm going back to bed. I'm going to get at least another hour in. Because y'all pray for us in Chicago. We've got meetings all day. Uh, very productive meetings. Very good stuff in planning for the future of our tribe and what we're going to become and what we're going to reproduce in the earth. So y'all just pray for myself, um, Apostle Stevenson, Pastor Adrian. Uh, we're in it all uh, most of the day today, and we just believe in God for what he's going to do in us and through us together. All right, But y'all are a part of that, so thank you all for being a part of what we're creating and what we're becoming. All right, Love you guys. Y'all have a great, great, great Tuesday. I'll see you all tomorrow morning.